So my name is Howard Stewart. I am an operations management marketing major in my fourth year now. Um, I've been always a business student. So I started actually in international, in international business and then switched over after my first year. Um, and so, yeah. I'm uh, Dr. Chuck Sox. I am the uh, academic program director for the uh, operations and industrial management majors at, uh, at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, I've been a, a, an operations management faculty member for uh, almost 30 years now. And um, uh, yeah. Um, so to get the ball, we have a couple questions just about supply chain, um, as that is a big deal right now. Um, with coronavirus and COVID-19 going around. Um, so our first question is, what might be some things that are happening right now in supply chain industries that are related to COVID-19? And so what are some issues that we're seeing? And then how are some uh, supply chains adjusting to these issues and problem solving? Yeah, so there are huge, huge changes going on uh, related to the, to the virus and its impact on the economy. and and the uh, restrictions on, on retail and uh, business operations. So just thinking about the retail industry that uh, students or uh, are people are, are familiar with, uh, just changes in retail operations of many stores having to close their, uh, their storefronts. Uh, many companies uh, doing a lot more online sales. So uh, from a customer standpoint, you know, we, we know that impacts uh, package delivery coming to our homes. So there's a lot more of that uh, going through the supply chain right now um, on the back end in terms of, of product distribution. Sometimes those shipments, uh, those package deliveries are coming from different distribution centers. Sometimes they come from the same distribution center that, that supplies the local bricks and mortar store. So for some companies, they're basically scaling back in some locations in terms of their distribution operations and other in other locations they are having to scale up and hire more. So there are lots of reports of, of uh, companies hiring more people uh, in distribution uh, and in, in transportation and, and in package delivery. Um, obviously, on the manufacturing side, there are huge impacts as well. Um, you know, we see uh, uh, surges in, in uh, demand for certain products. Uh, cleaning supplies, toilet paper is no, you know, another example, yeah. right? Um, and and so uh, just having having huge impacts in, in on the supply chain uh, uh, around the world. Yeah. Yeah, that actually leads into my next question. I saw a really interesting article kind of describing the toilet paper crisis that we're all experiencing, um, and how that's actually um, a shift in supply chains. That there's typically a bulk supply chain for like, restaurants and stuff. Um, and that's affecting other industries as well, I heard. Right, yeah, so, so uh, the paper products, you know, there, there are commercial paper products and then there are residential uh, yeah. um, uh, uh, types of, of, of products that, that consumers buy in the store. So with, with everyone having to stay home now, so there's a huge shift toward uh, those residential <laughs> consumer products, right? And, and, and less demand on the commercial grade uh, products and so, those companies are having to shift their production schedules over to make more of the residential products. And then of course the, the distribution centers and, and the local retailers <clears throat> are having to shift, uh, you know, their inventories and delivery schedules. So yeah, it's, it's a huge shift in, in the demand for that, for that product. Yeah. I just, that article was really funny because we all mm -hmm. believed that this was just everyone hoarding toilet paper, but in fact it was supply chain. So I thought that was cool. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's some hoarding going on. Today. I've seen plenty of uh, shopping carts filled with toilet paper going out. I mean, that's gonna. How long is that gonna last you, right? So yeah. So Funny. we could. I mean, that, you know, anytime you have uh, that kind of what we call forward buying going on with, with oh, consumers, yeah. you know, what what's really happening is not there's not really a necessarily an increase in demand, although there 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 is in this case with people staying home more. But that it may mean with with people, you know, kind of uh, stocking up on those products. There may be a dip in, in in demand for those products once the restrictions are lifted and people are going back to work and you know out in public. Yeah, definitely. Um, so following up with that, what are some supply chains or industries that you've noted had handled this shift very well, kind of adjusted very quickly to the curve and the crisis kind of thing, and adjusted their supply chains? Any notable ones? 
Well, certainly, uh, you know, the major online retailers uh, like Amazon and other firms that already had a strong online uh, retail presence. Uh, I, I, you know, personally, I've noticed that we, we've seen we haven't seen any major delays in, in receiving in you know, receiving those products. Um, the package delivery companies uh, seem to be uh, you know continuing to deliver on time, um, so they're they're uh, doing well. I think the the grocery store, the major grocery store chains uh, like like Kroger, uh, have have adjusted right. So you know we had some initial shortages, but you know once uh, once they had some time to kind of catch up and adapt to the new new demand patterns, uh, they were able to uh, you know get get product on the shelf. Um, and, and now as we're seeing restrictions on the number of people allowed in stores that yeah, may, yeah. that help moderate some of the, the panic buying behavior and, and may give the grocery store chains a chance to, to catch up and, and get things restocked. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we kind of touched on logistics moving throughout the country, the different distribution channels that we're using more of. Um, what other things within logistics and kind of that movement of goods um, should we kind of expect to see or would you predict to see with this kind of situation? Well, we're seeing, uh, we're already seeing uh, uh, major reductions in shipments coming out of Asia. So particularly intermodal uh, shipments uh, on ocean going vessels. So um, a, a, many ocean carriers are canceling their, uh, some of their sailings and actually docking some of their ships uh, because of the reduction in freight coming out of out of Asia. So that's um, that's been a big adjustment. Um, trucking companies, uh, domestic trucking companies are, are now adjusting to the new demand patterns and shipment patterns. So so what I've heard from some of the, the local uh, uh, transportation service providers is, is that they're not necessarily seeing a, a reduction in shipments, just a change in the shipment patterns. Uh, and so they're they're uh, they're you know they're having to adjust to those to those changes. Okay, very cool. And then our last question, just for students staying at home and wanting to stay up to date, what are some things or um, some of your favorite ways to staying up to date, not only with the virus and the news going on, but also how it's affecting supply chains, so students can be more aware. Well, I, one of my favorite sources of information is Wall Street Journal. So uh, just you know, staying on top of publications there. Uh, they also have a, a daily uh, logistics briefing that I subscribe yeah. to. So if you can uh, get, you know, find the link for that. And, and uh, that's very focused in supply chain and logistics and uh, particularly on the, the current uh, COVID crisis. So that's a, that's a really good source. But then there are other uh, periodicals out there like uh, a supply chain quarterly and supply chain digest. So you can just do a quick, uh, you know, quick search on, on and find some of those periodicals. And many of them have some, some interesting um, articles that are, that are coming out now too. Well, very cool. Thank you. Sure. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So another question for you, Dr. Sox, is just how does the operations management industrial management program within the Leonard College of Business prepare its students for not only like real world situations, but in situations like this um, to be more impactful and kind of better our supply chains? Yeah, so we uh, we have a number of courses that our students take that, that are related to supply chain. We have a supply chain management analysis course. Uh, production planning and scheduling, uh, purchasing and, and logistics course. So, so through that coursework, uh, students are, are very well prepared to understand the complexities of, of supply chain operations and logistics operations, uh, how, to, how to use data uh, to do planning. Although in this situation, it's really unique, right? Because you can't, you know, historical data doesn't necessarily represent what now, so what you really have to do is look at look at the most recent data. What what are the new demand patterns? How are things changing? Uh, and, and then using that information to help adjust and adapt uh, your ongoing uh, your planning and, and operational activities. So many of our students, fortunately, have have a good work experience uh, in the Cincinnati area with local local firms. I'm really impressed with the kinds of experiences that our students have with those firms. Uh, and so then I think that that professional experience, along with uh, the formal uh, methods and techniques and training that we provide in the academic program 
are a really good combination that really prepare our students to be uh, very effective uh, even in, in, in situations like this. Very cool. I would definitely agree with that, I think. <laughs>